Okay, I have a little bit of a presentation. Um, but first we're gonna do a hypo. <laughs> and then you're gonna turn it in and then I'm gonna have you rewrite it. Thank you all for coming. This is really, it, it's really mind-bending, actually, to look back over 27, it's actually beyond 27 years, because there are people here that I tutored in law school. So it goes back almost 30 years to, to see this whole stretch um, that has been my professional adult life. Half my life, really, um, is phenomenal. I, I'm not even quite sure how to deal with it, and my husband and I will be talking about that for weeks to come, I'm sure. Um, before I get started, I want to thank again Michelle and Claire and Kea and, and uh, Mariah for um, all the work they did. This is a lot of work to put on an event like this, and they were great, and they were happy and cheerful, and they were just really wonderful. So thank you, wherever you guys are, you're floating around. Um, and An Lu is, you know, he's always like that, by the way. <laughs> okay, he is always, he's like a golden retriever on steroids. And, <laughs> He is just always like that. He has always been like that. He was an amazing tutor. Um, he was an amazing SBA president. He usually brings bags of things and has little um, uh, just things to display when he gives talks. Um, and we're all friends here, so I can say embarrassing things that maybe I shouldn't that are a little off color, but he once br brought a vibrating condom to demonstrate um, an IP issue to family night, um, <laughs> among other things. Um, all right, so I also really want to thank all of you for coming, and I want to shout out a whole bunch of people. Like, there are people from 19, my 1993 class, the class that I, the very first class I worked with, I think there are at least four people. Where are you? Stand up. Stand up. Where are you guys? Richard Carnero. And come on, where are, there's others. There's several here. Well, anyway, yeah, there they are, right there. <laughs> yes. So this was from the very first class I ever got to work with. Um, and, you know, we go back a long way. So um, we've been in it together for a lot of years. Um, there are people that have come from really far away. So I see Tamara Lawson, one of our three law professors from ASP, standing back there in the corner. Um, she came all the way from Florida. Is Ayana here? Ayana Blue? I thought she was coming. Um, anyway, uh, she was signed up to come, but she was supposedly going to be here and coming from Cleveland. Um, there's a bunch of people from Southern California, like Richard Carnero, David Sutton, a federal public defender. Um, who else? Uh, Guillermo. Guillermo Escobedo, wherever you are. Guillermo um, from Southern California. Liz Kim, who came from Southern California. So a bunch of people have come from, from quite a ways away. Um, Yanni Perez came all the way from Washington, D.C. She works for the Department of Labor, where we have at least like eight ASPers working. We have this like really amazing connection with the Department of Labor because somehow I got connected with somebody there who hires, and, and then she'll call me every time there's a, a, an opening, and then I, you know, look what I have to choose from. It's like, here, take your pick. It's like a kid in a candy shop. And she keeps hiring. The last time she had one position open and I sent her a couple different people because she wanted someone Spanish speaking and she hired them both. So what can you say? So I keep it coming. Um, we have four former SBA presidents, or three former SBA pre presidents here. Jamal Anderson. Um, David Sutton. David Sutton. An Lu. And we've had a total of seven, I believe, over the years. And that's, if you divide that into 27, I don't know what that is, but you do the math. Um, <laughs> we're lawyers, not mathematicians. Um, uh, let's see, what else do we have? How many people were former tutors in ASP? Those of you that were tutors. Look at that. Just look around. <laughs> you know? And, yeah, and me too. Um, it's really, really just amazing. And the other thing that's, the other people that are here that I really want to shout out, or I don't know if any of them are left yet, um, is the current students. How many current students that are in ASP right now are here right now? I want you to come up here right now.
Bienvenidos. So there were a bunch more, but you know, finals begin on Monday. And so I told them, come for an hour, get some free food, and network. Okay, and some of them managed to stick it out. So you guys look into the past, because what you see is yourself. Yeah. And look into the future, because here it is, right here. So in the past hundred days, we've been pretty scared. I'm still pretty scared. But I look here, and it gives me great hope. Um, so, you know, wonderful. And this is the reason to donate if you haven't donated yet. <laughs> Tuition is way more than it was in your day. So um, um, I hope that they will continue to inspire you. There's been a lot of um, uh, student profiles on the Facebook and on the emails that are going out, and they're all just tremendous people. But there are, you know, for every one that you see, there's, you know, 20 more. So um, they really are our future. And um, I hope that you guys will continue to support them as you have in past years. So thank you. So I'll probably cry, so just yeah. get used to it, most likely. Um, I want to thank the dean, John Trasvina. He's been incredibly supportive of ASP in the way no other dean has. And I've never had a dean that wasn't supportive. But he really gets it in a way that I think other deans haven't necessarily on a more visceral level. And that's really been um, tremendous. So thank you so much for supporting ASP continually and um, making me feel valued, which is really um, important and important to me. Um, thank you to the class captains who rallied people and called people and you know that's not easy to do and had to dig through old emails and then try to find old emails and so forth. I really appreciate that. Um, I hope you had fun doing it. Uh, I want to shout out some people here that are really special. Rod Fong and Richard Sakai. <laughs> You know, some of you know one, some of you know the other, some of you know both of them. But uh, together, we have been doing academic support together at USF for the last, um, the three of us, for the last like five years, four or five years. And um, Richard and I have been together at USF. Started in 1990 together. Um, those of you that were here in 93, actually, it was me and Richard. And Richard was directing the program that year. And, um, um, and then he went away for a while, taught legal research and writing for a while, came back, has done other kind of academic support. And um, I want to particularly shout him out tonight because Richard is one of the most humble people I know. And if anybody deserved to not be humble, it would be him. He <laughs> and Rod both are national experts in, in academic support and bar pass, et cetera. Um, they are regularly at conferences all over. You can't go to a conference in academic support without somebody knowing who they are and seeking their counsel and so forth. So we have been extremely lucky to have them here. Um, Richard will be leaving USF to golden, more golden pastures of <laughs> kicking back and not working so long after this year. Um, and he doesn't like to, to make a big deal out of that. Some might be calling that retirement. He doesn't call it that. It's just kind of moving to a different realm and not having to get up whenever he wants. So, or I mean being able to get up whenever he wants and not having to go anywhere. Um, so um, without these two and their support over the years, because Rod and I, even though we haven't always worked together at the same institution, we have for a number of years, but we've been buddies forever and um, have exchanged ideas forever. And it's we, we have this thing where we get together and. We'll go to conferences and we, you know, blow the conference off and go sit in coffee shops and just talk ASP and talk learning and teaching. And I've learned more during those times than any conference um, presentation I've ever been at. So they are tremendous and um, I owe them my professional life. Heidi Ho, who is now the assistant director of ASP. She's actually the director and I'm the assistant director and I just do what she tells me to do. Um, she is from the class of 97. She was in ASP herself, and I fully expect her to take it over when I retire in three to five years. Not quite yet. <laughs> um, and she has just been amazing and tremendous, and I love her, and she comes to it with love and her heart and her own creative juices at a time when 
you know, I'm getting a little up there in the years, and it's, you know, sometimes hard to read those essays, and Heidi is right there with me. Um, so it's been, it's really been amazing. Um, okay. So um, I want to... I want to acknowledge um, some people upon whom ASP was built. So ASP goes back a long, long way. Um, it goes back probably more than 40 years. And so Rod Fong, um, Manny Forts, where are you? Eileen, all of these, these folks were people who were there before I was and actually were in law school before I was. And they were part of the groups of students who were demanding support. Um, USF at that time wasn't particularly diverse and didn't give its students of color much credit or support, and they started demanding it. And they were the ones who really formed, I believe, a student sort of organization that offered tutorials and so forth. And then it took different shapes over the years until it landed in the lap of Trina Grio. And I want to talk a little bit about her and Ken Lloyd. Um, so I want to shout them out because they really are your <laughs> Because they are your history, and um, your aunts and uncles and grandparents, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the history of ASP, because I really believe you have to acknowledge those that came before you. This is where I'm going to cry, so maybe I can hold it together. Um, many of you knew Trina Grio. <sighs> yeah, I see it already. Uh, Trina passed away in 1996. And <laughs> Excuse me, I hate this. Um, I hate doing this, but uh, Trina came to USF um, as a tenure, or a tenure track law professor. She was the first woman of color, I believe, to be at USF um, in a tenure track position. And she was brilliant, she was wonderful, and she was really interesting. Her mother was Italian, her father was Cuban black, and she identified Latino and African American and feminist, and she had lots of identities, and she was really, um, really a complex person and so relatable, it was just unbelievable. It was really the first law professor that I felt like I could just talk to and just be a regular person with, and she, she everybody loved her. I took, um, uh, I had, God, I can't remember, mediation from her, which was a great class, and um, con law as well. Um, but she was also handed the academic support program. And, you know, to teach two full-time, to be a full-time law professor and teach two classes is a tall order, plus she was researching. And to also have to run a program is almost too much. And she was sort of, you know, not that happy about it, I think, when she first got it. But she believed in the mission of it. She just thought it was going to be too much. But it turned out she really loved it, and she loved it more than anything else. But it wasn't working all that well. There were way too many students in it. Um, in a way that the student didn't have the res the school didn't have the resources to serve. So Trina um, knew it wasn't working. A lot of the students weren't making it. A lot were, but but many weren't. And it wasn't because they weren't capable. It was because we weren't doing the right things for them. So Trina put together a committee, and she was brilliant politically. And she got people from the left and people from the right and people from everything in between. And they voted on a whole proposal for ASP, which was the form it is now. The program we have now is because of her work, her political work in the school. And they voted on it unanimously, which doesn't, you know, that, that almost doesn't happen in a law school. So she really made something happen. And then I, at that time, was, um, she brought me in to be a director. And I'll tell you a little more about that later. But that's sort of the history. In addition to Trina is Ken Lloyd. So Ken Lloyd was the director of admissions for well over 20 years, and some, how many of you here knew Ken Lloyd? So a lot of people here did, many of you wouldn't, but his picture is in the admissions office. And he was just this wonderful, he was a very tall man, I don't remember, he was taller than Manny, I think. Um, he was African American, he was gay, um, in a time where that wasn't, at, people weren't out um, as, as much as they are now. He had this beautiful gap to smile. He just had the most beautiful smile. He was kind of quiet, kind of a quiet giant. And um, he ran admissions for many years and was responsible for many students of color who came to USF, including Marty Jenkins and probably um, some that are sitting here tonight. And he really believed in the mission of ASP. And he died in, in about six months before Trina Grio died. Um, so we, you know, it was just a huge double whammy at the time. It was pretty awful. 
But, um, but for them, I think this program probably wouldn't exist, and it wouldn't exist in the form it's in if it did exist at all. So I want to pay tribute to them, and I hope, I'm not particularly religious, but I hope that there's a heaven, and I hope they're looking down. So, uh, I always feel like Trina handed me a precious child, and that my job has been to protect that child. Um, Richard often talks about ASP as protecting the baby, and I, I think that really is akin to what um, Trina did, is she created this thing, and then she sort of let, let it go and let, pushed me into it. And um, um, if she could see today what I see and what I've seen over the years, she, I, she would be thrilled. This is exactly what her vision was. She had, she had vision way ahead of, of everyone else. And uh, it, you know, she put it in motion and many of you, I would say everybody here today um, that benefited in some way from the ASP is, is because of her. You know, I was the, I got the marching orders, but she's the one, she was the general that made it happen. So we owe a tremendous amount to her. You know, you stand on the shoulders of giants and Ken and Trina were two amazing giants. So, you know, in 27 years we have a federal magistrate, we have six superior court judges, we have three administrative law judges. These are just the ones I know about. You know, I'm not necessarily in touch with everybody else. We have the chief public defender of Alameda County, Brandon Woods, the, city, the San Francisco city manager, Naomi, um, there's countless PDs and DAs. How many people here are public defenders? Uh, or have been public defenders? That's a lot. That's the last one. Yes. I mean, there's a huge number, and I have a huge number of upcoming public defenders. How many people have been DAs? Okay. There's plenty of DAs. Um, we have three law professors. Tamara, who I introduced earlier. There's um, Ifoma Ajunwa, who I believe just got a job at Cornell, is that if I'm hearing right? Um, she was at UDC, University of District of Columbia, and now she's apparently the hottest ticket around the country and is gonna be teaching contracts. She had contracts from Garvey, she was his tutor. She is now teaching contracts, excuse me. Um, um, and she'll be at a major um, law school in the country. And most recently, Ronnie Gibson, who will be teaching at Laverne University School of Law, or Laverne School of Law in Southern California. So three law professors. <laughs> there are at least eight former ASPers at the Department of Labor. There are countless partners in law firms, countless sole practitioners. Um, Najia Burks, who's here, works at the Department of Education. Um, there are people in public interest, there's partners, there's people in big law, people in you know, intellectual property, um, every conceivable area of law, I could go on and on and on, I can't shout at every single thing, but you know, the array is amazing and that's exactly how it should be, that's how it should always have been, and Trina's vision helped to make that happen. So we look out and what we see is amazing. Um, I wanna show you a picture here. This is um, two former ASPers, Will Lane, and um, Rick Owens. And, uh, okay, well, this is not moot court. This is well after they graduated, passed the bar. Um, Will Lane is a DA in Alameda County. Um, Rick Owens is a PD in Alameda County. And um, both were in ASP. In fact, I think Rick was Will's um, crim tutor, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so they happen to be assigned to the same case. But what's even more beautiful is the person that took the picture is Ursula Dixon, who is from the class of 90, what year, seven, five? five 95, I think, anyway, 90 something. Um, she's an African American woman. Um, she is a Superior Court judge in Alameda County. And it was the three of them, that triangle. Um, So Rick sent me an email and said, you're going to really love this, and then he sent me the picture. But I look at that and I think, you know, 27 years ago, we wouldn't have had that picture. That picture did not exist. Or if it did, it was so few and far between that it's to be almost non-existent. And Trina helped to make that happen, and this program helps to make it happen. You guys made it happen, because really, you know, I know it's about my birthday and all that, and that's great, but it's really about ASP, and ASP is all of us together and all of you because I regularly send out emails about, I have a student who's interested in X, 
and I get five emails back from people who are willing to help that person or find an externship for them. Or I have an alum who's looking for a job in Y and, and I can hook them up with somebody. I have somebody in just about everything who um, will support people and that's what they need or who will mentor. Manny Forts, who was you know, mentor of the year, who regularly calls me and says, don't you have anybody you want to you wanna send to me? And he's, he has talked people off the ledge more than once. It's like, I, this guy should be on the payroll at USF. It's amazing. <laughs> but that's what it takes. It's family. <laughs> so we are ASP strong. We are amazing. And we built this network. And you know, you think about people who grew up in families with generations of lawyers and so forth, that's what they have, right? And there's nothing wrong with it per se, but not everybody gets that, and so now we have it too. We built our own. Thank you very much. So I've been incredibly lucky all these years because I'm the only person I know who has been in the same job for 27 years and who loves it. And um, it feeds my soul in a way that I don't think anything else could have. I get to work with people who are brilliant and wonderful and interesting and who are very different than me. You know, I'm a skinny white girl from Roseburg, Oregon. <laughs> and uh, the town I grew up in was all white. There was one black family as I was growing up. So I grew up in a place that had no diversity, no real awareness. And, you know, I can tell you, well, I can tell you stories I'm sure you would believe, but things that I look back on that horrify me now about things people would say that, you know, I just was so unaware and what you've done is educated me. You've turned me into something that I wasn't, I didn't start out to be. Um, and taught me all about white privilege and its power and for that I am eternally grateful and I learn every day. I learn about myself, um, I learn about the world and I learn to look at it through your eyes and I don't think that could have ever happened any other way and I've learned far more from you and you Iraq is an easy thing to teach. This is not so much. That's an insider joke. Okay. So, okay, so I prepared a little bit of a presentation um, about how I got here. So how did I arrive in this job and at law school and all of that? And so let's go back a few years. Um, Frank and Winnie, that's mom and dad. Um, <laughs> Um, they were a bit younger then. My dad passed away 15 years ago. My mom is 88, just celebrated her 88th birthday, and she's still going strong. She was just down here, and a lot of my students got to meet her, which was great. Um, and they gave birth to Joe, Marsha, and Carol. I'm the one in the middle. Um, so, quite clearly, I was the baby. Um, also, uh, sometimes referred to as the accident. Um, um, and, um, you know, when you're the baby and you weren't necessarily planned, um, they sort of let you go. I sort of think of myself as a free-range kid, which is, yeah, you know, they don't break and they just kind of let me go and I was the wild child. Um, and, you know, there's not very many pictures of me. Honestly, there are very few of me as a kid, but they all kind of look like this. And I think, I think that, you know, this is where my the sort of the background to the nickname I had growing up, which was Sticky. Um, feel free to use it. Um, so, uh, you know, I did manage to grow up free range. and. I call much of my formative years. Um, <laughs> so let's just share these, because you know, you get to catch up on them. This is my personal favorite. That was second grade. And uh, I, yeah, I don't know, it looks like I slept wrong or something, but I've always loved that picture, because I think it really says who I was at that kid, which is the free range kid. Uh, but there was others. <laughs> and, you know, the middle one is maybe a close second. But, you know, they're all pretty good. I got a little better as time went on. So, you know. Um, uh, you know, they got better or not, I don't know. Um, you know, and by the way, don't you have, I don't know if you have a lot of pictures, but my people, we take pictures like this. You're always standing in front of a car. <laughs> and I, you know, who knows why that is, but it's just a, anyway, um, my 21st birthday, um, yeah, there I was. And you know, I looked sort of normal, I think. Um, but 
Um, you know, and I went on to, to many great things. But I think once you're free range, you're kind of always free range. And so, you know, you may look normal, but it kind of manifests in other ways. So over the years, you know, I have, do many inappropriate things. I believe it's important to teach the young important skills. So I took it upon myself to do that. Uh, these are my nieces, by the way. Um, and I believe it's important to be a good role model, so I try to do that. Um, we'll just skip right by that one. Um, <laughs> you can ask me about it later. Um, I, I always tried to do my civic duty, but I do it in my own way. This is me on the um, floor of the state capitol in Sacramento. That's a long story, and I'll tell you some other time. Um, but, you know, I believe it's important to be involved in the community, so I have been. Um, and, you know, I think it's important to, to um, have ceremonies. So my wedding was a costume party. We were Vikings. But, you know, I've always, always um, liked to take care of people. And I didn't have children, um, not that I gave birth to anyway, but I got kind of a room full of them here. And all my friends had kids, as you can see. So I got an armload of babies in that one. Um, so, um, and I like animals too, so I like to take care of things and I like to take care of people. So even though um, I would like to say that I went to law school because I was motivated by a sense of justice and the wrongness in the world, um, I'd be less than honest if I said that. I went to law school because I had a bad breakup, my neighbor was going to law school and I was bored with my job. All right. <laughs> so. I didn't go for any particularly good reason, but I think when you're free range, you find your way to the right thing. And while I was in law school, there was one thing that really stood out. I did a lot of the sort of straight line things. I went to law review and you know, I, I got good grades and um, I interviewed to be one of the editor positions for law review and I really thought I was gonna get it and I didn't get it and I was really pissed off. And what I wound up doing instead was being a tutor in the academic support program for Trina Grio. And in that program, um, I tutored my first student was Jaime Leonis, who's right here. Jaime, stand up. <laughs> and um, Jaime was had a, not a particularly good first semester, so I got called in to be the tutor. But he had a really great second semester, and I got a lot of credit for that. And then later on, um, uh, when I was coming back, I wound up sort of being able to bank on that because Trina wanted me to be her assistant in the program. But you know, let me tell you something about being free range. Being kind of a spoiled kid, you get what you want, and you get to do what you want, right? So I don't settle very easily for things I don't like. And I went to practice law for a couple years, and I hated it. And my, my dentist told me he was gonna give me a mouth guard because I was grinding my teeth. And I just said, oh no, I'm gonna solve this a way different way. And <laughs> so I started searching around and Trina had an assistant director position open up for a semester and there was a legal research and writing um, gig and we cobbled something together and I went back and I ricocheted back into to ASP and I've been there ever since, that was 1990. So free range or not, um, that's how I got there. Um, and I wish I could say that I aimed myself there, but I wound up there, but I wound up in the right place. And I, I tell my students a lot, um, follow your heart, because I think, you know, I was a spoiled kid and I got what I want, so I just won't put up with stuff that I don't like very much. And I wound up in the most amazing career that has made me grow amazingly and made me feel like, wow, there's this whole thing out there that's happening in the world that I can help with and I can contribute to. And then I've gotten this, this amazing group of people. And you know, this is just an iota of all the other folks that are out there, and you know that. So it's been an amazing, amazing ride. Um, but the, before I turn it over to you for the roast, um, I wanted to kind of set the tone. So I wanted to call out um, a particular student who was really, I, if I had to say one of my favorite students, I don't like to play favorites, but I would say um, probably was. Um, this was a student who was really loved by everybody, probably the friendliest student I ever had. Incredibly bright, incredibly talented. 
Um, she was someone who always comforted others, and I spent a lot of time with her over the years, and I can honestly say she's probably one of the most affectionate students I ever got to work with and really universally loved by everybody in ASP. And so I just want to shout her out. Um, there she is right there. <laughs> Some of you know who this is. This is Carrie Sandoval. Jesse, are you still here? Where's Jesse? There's Jesse. So this was Jesse's service dog while she was in law school, and she came to law school every day. And I would often see Jesse out talking to a student, and um, somebody would be down with their arms around the dog, just hugging them. I saw somebody kiss the dog once. I started telling her that she needed to, to start charging a dollar every time somebody. Anyway, um, Carrie was one of the most loved law students um, we ever had. And so with that, um, roast away, my friends. Yeah.